Hello everybody. Back to normal. I do have company this week. I've got a stepdaughter in from Colorado with her boyfriend and so I might not get enough painting time in this week but uh, I will try to squeeze in what I can. So while they're gone in town to do some running around I'm gonna throw in a quick video. I also want to give a shout out to Arteza they are um, asking if I would show their products. They were gracious and sent me a lot, a lot of stuff to try out. And I told them that I kind of do big pours and work on a larger scale. So they were kind enough to ship. Uh, this is a 14 pack and I don't have the box anymore because I had already opened it up and, <laughs> and did a pour the other day. And then I got my instructions on how they would like me to uh, promote them. And I've got a link below the video that will show the, um, the link to go over to the products that I recommend. And this is a 14 pack of premium acrylic tube paints. They're in these pouches. Each pouch is 4.06 ounces. It's very thick, creamy, and excellent quality paint. I already did one that was green and a purple one all together in one video back previously, multiple videos ago. And also, I think I used this smaller pack that I had purchased on Amazon. It's a 24 pack. And it is the same premium acrylic paints. It just comes in little trays of six tubes in each tray. So you get quite a selection of colors. And these tubes are 0.74 ounces, so they're not quite an ounce of paint. But they're very thick and creamy and rich and very, very beautiful when you use them. And I'm also going to you know, demonstrate in this video how to use them. So this is the 14 pack and just quickly it's black and white, silver and metallic gold. This is the burnt umber, the burnt sienna, phthalo green which is one of my favorites, pale green, yellow ochre, light uh, lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, crimson red and scarlet red. So that was in a 14 pack that came boxed up in a set and I will provide links to that. And they also have canvases, they have markers and all kinds of products on their website if you want to check them out. This is an 8 pack of 12 by 12 inch canvases, 4 pack of 18 by 24 canvases, and I got a two pack of the 24 by 36 canvases. So I've got quite a few canvases to be able to pour on. I'm very appreciative of them sending me the product. And there will, there will also be a coupon code that I will mention below the video that is good until July 23rd. And it's Sandra underscore let 10. And that will get you 10% off of their products. So I will provide that link below the video. 24 by 24 inch canvas that I painted on before and it was really ugly. I did a pour and it was really ugly so I put a very light coat of turquoise paint on it. And I have new paints. So the company name is Arteza and they have pencils, markers, pens, paper pads, canvases and panels, paint, brushes, quilting supplies, crafting, office supplies, kid stuff. They have their own website. So Arteza has their own website and then also there's an Amazon link. This was a set that I bought of 24 and they're probably, um, the tubes are probably three quarters of an ounce, but they're premium acrylic paints, so they're super thick and rich, and they come in these tubes just like this. 
So Arteza also wanted to promote their product and asked me if I would be a spokesman for them and demo their products for you and they sent me a box of 14 premium acrylic colors and they are all in these 4 ounce, 4.06 ounce they're the kind of the tubes that you squeeze out of. So, um, 14 colors. I'm not using these colors today, but I just wanted to show you the different colors that they sent me. They sent me a white and black. White and black. They have a gold and a silver. And uh, two reds, two blues, two greens, two yellows. No orange. And two browns. So I have mixed some colors and um, they're put aside for this painting, but I want to show you their products and um, they are super rich and creamy and thick and I know that the other video that I have posted using their two paints, I really enjoyed using it. It was it turned out very good quality, all that. I had no issues with any anything that I was going to do though. I had mixed up an orange and it was, yeah, it's kind of so-so. No, I was going to add, yeah, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to this. Just a little bit to rust, make it more of a rusty orange, but I'm not adding a whole lot to it. All paints that I mixed yesterday until we went on a shopping spree to get a new camera. There. I was kind of zoomed in, I think, a little bit too much. So I mixed all of these with my Oatrol, which I have been using here lately. And I just finished up everything I had. It's Oatrol Easy Flow Paint Conditioner, water-based paint conditioner. If you're in a country that does not have Oatrol or, or Floatrol, which is pretty much the same thing, this is from Europe, and it's only available on Oatrol's website or on Amazon. But if you're in a country that does not have either one, Oatrol or Floatrol, go to your paint store and ask for a water-based paint conditioner or paint extender. And that's what this is. These are mixed one-to-one, -one, or I might have put a little bit more Oatrol than I did the paint. I just wanted it nice and fluid. It was white and gray and yellow. And if any, for any reason, any color peaks through, I want it to be something that would be harmonious with the colors I've chosen. It's based on a certain color palette that I really like. And it's also in my sister's house. Swipe and do some flowers, but this is by far the largest swipe that I've ever done. So I've got brown which I mixed with, um, it was their, it was Arteza's Burnt Umber, and I added a little bit of black to deepen it because it was not dark enough for me. And I mixed the yellow and the gold together. I mixed the red and the uh, uh, gold and yellow together to make the orange, uh, the green, I added some yellow too to make it lighter and then I used the phthalo green and the green together to get a deeper green which in the camera it looks still really bright but it's not. There's a pretty good difference between these two greens. The red was pretty much straight red and then I had made my own turquoise color. And then whatever I had left, I added my Oatrol to, to make the same color with the Oatrol in it. These were super thick 
with the Oetrol added to it that because the two paints are like super thick and creamy they're you know artist grade paints so you do have to add water and so what I did was I mixed water with a little bit of Oetrol in it and used that water to squirt into all my colors and I always squirt water in bit by bit until I get it to the consistency that I like I don't just pour it in I don't measure it I just squirt it until the paint runs off the stick the way it should. So the color I'm going to swipe with is brown today instead of black. So that's going to be a little bit different. And I'm, I mixed these yesterday. So I'm just checking on the consistency of them to make sure they're what I need. So you want it to pour off in a steady stream. I don't know if you can see that, but it continually flies off the stick. These all look like they may have thickened up just slightly. I'm trying to decide if I want to add any more water. I have my squeeze bottles over here to the right and I'm going to use those for the flowers in my garden. This, these colors are going to be for swiping. Get out, get out a few of my little tools that I might use, the straw or whatever. I have my tubing here if I decide to use the tubing. So, and this canvas, there was actually some lumps in it from my original pour, but I don't care about that because this is going to be multicolored and lots of, maybe hopefully big cells, and uh, I'm not really worried about the lumps. That will just, you know, it was funny, I did that smaller one and I did it over one that I had already painted on but I had varnished half of it and then when I gessoed over it and then did my pour the half that had the varnish underneath kind of buckled up in like what looked like roots or like the vine pieces it was kind of interesting it gave it a little texture and I actually kind of like it so I'm not gonna trash it I really like the painting I had like the red poppies at the top. So, just trying to decide at my last minute. And this is also a deep canvas. It's a one and a half inch canvas. And it's, I think, 24 inches square. So it's good sized. I have my paper towels right here that are ready for swiping. I always use good quality paper towels, like I mentioned, because you don't want them falling apart on you and you don't want them leaving uh, lint or fuzzy stuff after you know your painting dries or whatever so I always actually the other paper towels I was using I thought well, these are Viva but I thought the other ones were Viva but they were from Sam's they were the members mark premium ones which are really good they don't fall apart on you so keep that in mind if you're a Sam's Club member the members mark premium paper towels are very good quality so those will be my swiping paper towels so I'm trying to decide the order that I want to go so I think what I'm going to do oh, I have not added silicone or coconut milk or anything. I'm going to try this differently and I hope it works out and if not I'll just have to scrape the whole thing. Gina DeLuca did one that was really beautiful with a rainbow of metallics and she put coconut milk in just her black which was her swiping color. So. I'm putting two pumps in 
my brown, which is my swiping color, but I gotta make sure it's stirred in here. I just love the way that stuff smells. And I did give it a pretty good stir because I have such a large cup of it. It's like 12 ounces or more. If I, if I swipe this way, my brown will be here. Then I want to start with the red. I'm going to do it in bands this time instead of uh, altering it like I have in the past few ones because I think you get more definition with your colors. Instead of doing just greens, I decided to throw in some orange and red just to see what happens. And it may look super crazy. And I do want it to go to the edges. I was stressed. It's, it's in a good way. I love seeing my sister. I'm excited about going to Wilmington with her and doing the live pour with Lily's mix. That's really exciting. So um, that's not... It's just stressful because I have so much to do in a short period of time. That's why I'm stressed. I'm going to add a little strip of yellow here. And then here's the darker green. So usually what happens is when you swipe towards you, you swipe off a lot of color. So that's why I decided I'm ending my color with the turquoise that is in the background of my painting so that it might be the sky color. So we'll, we'll see how that turns out. So I want to do another strip of green. I'm in yellow. When you're in thinking mode and then you're talking, sometimes they don't one side with each other. <laughs> I'll do a little bit more of the light green. I sure hope this works with cells because it's going to be a lot of paint wasted if it doesn't produce cells. Sure that my color is on the sides. So this is going to end up being my sky up here. I have so much paint on here. This has silicone or coconut milk or anything. Clear off the way here. This is probably going to get messy. I'm trying to decide if I want to put anything else up here. I've got a pale, kind of turquoisey color. I'm just streaking a little bit through just to give it a little bit of character. Who knows? Like I said, when you swipe, it has a tendency to drag off all your color. I hope I didn't put too much red and orange, but I probably did. And I almost feel like I should throw in a little bit of green through here. Just a little bit. More time in the brown. The stick is like not tall enough for this cup. I could have added even more black into this. Like a really dark chocolate cell up, please. <laughs> I'm in trouble if it doesn't. Paper towels are it out first. You don't want it bunched up or anything like that. Half, it, this is two sections. You know how they tear in smaller sections? It's two sections. 
which will cover half of my canvas. And I want to make sure that it lays down in the paint. All the way across. Here we go. It worked. It made cells. They're not huge, but it did make cells. You always kind of hold your breath when you're swiping because you just you're just never certain if it's going to do it even evenly or whatever. So. So make sure it's totally laid down in the paint first. You can also take your paper towel and kind of tap it on the ends of your painting too, just to make sure there's brown and, you know, coverage. See that there's cells. I can breathe. This part here, I touched it with the paper towel and brown back on it. Ensure that the paint goes over the edges on the side here. And obviously there's less brown as it comes higher up because you've used up a lot of the brown to swipe with. So you just want to make sure that it's fairly uniform on the sides. Carefully. Just tilting that canvas just for a minute made things move around. No blue at the top for the most part. It all got wiped off. Or it got covered up by the colors that, you know, were coming down the line when you swipe. So, basically, I need to add brown back here. I'm near Fort Bragg, and I don't know if you can hear the helicopters, but that happens quite frequently. Stir the coconut milk up a good bit because I had so much paint in my cup, and so I have a lot of small cells. I was really hoping for some big cells, but it might have been because I put too much silicone in my cup. I was afraid because of the quantity of paint that I had that I didn't have enough silicone in there. I probably should have been happy with one pump and it might would have given me bigger cells. So that's just a note. I'm going to tilt and see if I can stretch the cells just a little bit and get rid of some brown. is coming faster than everything else so I'm trying to just get it to flow quicker so 
So that helped pull in a little bit more green and it stretched the cells a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can go one way and then the other, but I don't know because then it's making my cells kind of go at angles. And I don't really want them at angles. Turquoise were coming through a little bit more, but it's not, but that's okay. It may pop out if we do some fun stuff. You never know. Move everything off the table that I wasn't using, but I might use these colors that I poured. So I'm just going to put them off to the side here. Silicone in them. I didn't clean off my table because I knew I was going to do this pour and I knew it was going to be super messy and I didn't want to put down a nice clean sheet of butcher paper and then have it totally ruined by a puddle full of paint everywhere. Shift things with your uh, your skewer. Like I don't know why there's a there's the brown streak right here maybe where my paper towels overlapped. I think I'm going to do the heat gun on this. So it didn't change anything on the larger cells and it actually made these little teeny tiny yellow spots. Which is okay. I don't mind them. So now I've just got to come up with my master plan for my design of flowers. And my sister um, loves to work outside in her garden. She, she has a green thumb like to die for. I don't work outside at all because I'm an artist and I like to be indoors and painting. But she has a green thumb that she inherited from our grandmother. I have to be real looking. It's going to be pretend flowers. It's going to be abstract. Always keep that in mind. When you're doing something like this, it's not real looking. It's abstract because you have only a certain amount of control over what you're putting on this painting. I'm about my sister's house and I want to do really kind of yellows and oranges for the flowers and maybe throw in a little aqua aqua flowers. Athens. A teal color. There's no silicone in these paints. So if I want cells, which I do typically like cells, I need to add something to these before I go any further. And cells, which I would use the coconut milk if I wanted big cells. I want smaller cells, so I'm going to use my spot on treadmill. And I added, you know, several drops to the colors, except for the paints that I had very little left, and then I only put like a drop or so because you don't want so much silicone that your your painting is going to dry all greasy and. Okay, color, and I'm going to put a drop, and this is where it's so much easier to use squeeze bottles, but we're going to, we're going to try it this way. This is a pill, turquoise. This is the cool part about, because there's a lot of paint on this canvas. It's going to pull, when you blow, it's going to pull the colors underneath out. So that's why the green popped out, which I wasn't expecting, but that's okay. Lighter color down at the bottom, just a little off center. Blow out to look more like petals, just for something different. Probably be covered up by the paint eventually. It'll probably kind of soak in a little bit. The kind of orangey yellow flowers up here. 
Santa just wants to see how it looks first. Magenta. This orange. And the yellow. It have more of a poppy shape. I'm going to try it with the red. I'm experimenting. With the red. Punch at one time because the paint is so heavy and thick and I don't want it sinking down. Actually, I'm going to put a little of this and then I'm going to put the bright orange that's in my bottle on top of this before I do the yellow. And I'm dripping two, which you don't want to do if you can avoid. Kind of just take it back out in a way. So, I'm going to do this bright orange. Dripping off your stick, so just try to keep your cup nearby. Paint. I want to get so close to it. Use my squeeze bottle. Just because I have a little bit more control there to try to straighten that line up. time than I typically do on these because it's such a large canvas and there's so much paint on top. I, I'm putting it on really kind of heavy. There went a big blob of paint. And there's no really good way to get that off. I'm just going to have to make that into a flower. So that'll be a bigger one, huh? I'm going to add that lighter color that I didn't put on these just for a little bit more punch. I really like some golden yellow flowers. So maybe I will try this deeper orange and yellow. A lot of the green. Ask me about how I plan my spacing. I'm kind of a symmetrical girl. I try not to be, but I like things symmetrical. And I know in nature that's not what typically happens. So I try to get out of my symmetrical head on this, but sometimes it's hard. Blowing, especially on the little ones, I'm, it's very gentle, and that's why I'm still using my straw, because I have just a little bit more control. See, now I like that because it brought out some blue because the blue is up here underneath that green. I like that. For some reason, there's not much blue in that area. I want to get round. The, the paint is thin in that area for some reason. The different thing about this one is I don't have the green at the bottom 
because I wanted the red as if it were like flowers in the background or whatever. And I wanted the green back here and I really wanted the, the turquoise blue up here kind of to represent almost like the sky. So, um, seeing if I could get rid of some of that flower. Anything down here, which I'm gonna do, if I were to blow it, it's going to bring out the red and the orange. Because that is what is, that was what was beside the swiping color, so that's what it's going to pull out. So I really want my greenery to kind of lay on top, so I don't know if that I'll blow, but I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet. I do really like these though. I think I'm going to do a few more of those. There's no blue right there. of green in this area underneath the brown. In order to get anything leafy looking down here, I'm going to have to swipe it. Bring out just the few little areas that the green popped up, the darker green. I don't know. Right now I'm just experimenting in a few little areas. Try with my little oval palette knife to see if I can make it look like a leaf. So uh, it looks like it like a little bit. I'm like skimming the surface just barely, barely, barely. See, I think I need to come back through it and bring that color around. I don't put any where you dripped and usually you can get it back out. That red and brown back through it darkens it back up. It's easy as the other way that I've done it with the green at the bottom looking leafy. That's for sure. If I want bigger leaves, I'm going to have to just put them in with my squeeze bottles and swipe and see what happens. So I'll try one. I want a larger one. using something that's harder because I have to really skim it very softly and see it takes the paint and here it is it takes the brown and the orange and red better but it's not really what I'm looking for but because I've already started it I'm gonna do three of them because I like to do kind of, um, I try to do odd numbers most of the time. Threes, fives. Like I didn't count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I've got seven of those. One, two, three, four, five of those. One, two, three. You know, so I, I try to kind of go with odd numbers instead of pairs. Orange going back through it. Something smaller looking. And maybe I'll just do it like I normally do where I kind of line up the colors in a, a line. Find some way To do it in a swipe without it getting that brown in. I mean I could, I can just outline the leaves and leave them 
but I do like the, the look of the cells. Keep on adding because I want leaves in here. It's supposed to kind of look gardeny. So I'll just keep on trying. It just gets muddy. Paint on the back of my palette knife the colors I want. See that looked, that worked a little better. So orange and salmon and yellow. And so I'm basically just skimming that top layer, and that didn't work as well as the first one. But you get the gist of it. This leaf has totally disappeared. A little better. There's some splatter here. I want to try to get rid of that blue. I took my gloves off and I shouldn't have because, see, this is what happens. A little touch of reddish orange as well. So I'm going to try a drop of red. And maybe I'll do the bright orange just to see what it looks like. sink overnight. Put just a teeny drop of this salmon color for a little bit of lighter. I like it because it's colorful and happy looking. I do. Um, still want some more greens down here. totally brown down here. There's nothing under it. I'm just trying to do it with my skewer even. And now I've got to tie it all together somehow with vines of some sort. I want to see how this liner bottle will do with white in it just for playing purposes. Might not be a thick enough line. I'm going to use my sour apple. And I could probably wait until this dries more and then go in and put my line work in. And I think it'll lay on the top. A clog, because I can feel some resistance. So that's when you take the lid off and you just use a toothpick. That way you don't have a blob of paint shooting out. There's even, you know, you can even add just some green lines, like for tendrils of something. They're almost disappearing. So just trying to give the greater appearance of leaves than is already there. Do the reddish pinkish leaves. I like them just the way they are. 
everything's connected. See, I can even have one that just trickles in. I think I've got a, an attachment of some sort of green to mostly everything. See, even even throw in a highlight of yellow on some of them just to give it a little bit more personality. Lots of yellow of some sort. So the good part is, <clears throat> is that it's already starting to dry along the edges. Of course, this is really kind of thick, so it's going to probably take a little while. And I so wish I had some of this aqua up here, but I'm not sure exactly what to do to do that. I'm thinking. And I've thought about even putting something down here more, but I don't think I'm going to do that because it might get too busy looking like grass or something. But I don't think I can pull it off very well. Let me try something here. So I get my stick with some green and yellow kind of intermingled on the stick. Let me just see what happens. I'll try it in a place that I might can add a leaf. Like a long leaf or something, but it doesn't really look like grass per se. I do not have a steady hand, let me tell you that. Never have. I've been an artist for 20 years and I've never been steady. Really, can't say that's really adding a whole lot. But I am going to do a little bit just here and there. More greenery. kind of just sunk in, it's not, it's barely there. I'll add a little more greenery there. I'll add a few more of these little yellow. Doodads. How do you like doodads? people in other countries, and maybe it's a southern thing too, it may not, even in the United States, they may never heard doodads, but it just means something that's random, doodads. Isn't that a funny saying? And I have some people that tell me I talk way too much in my videos, and I'm, I'm apologizing now, because I am doing this to show you, and that's why I do talk, but some people apparently don't like me talking as much, and sorry, it's just kind of hard not to talk if I'm demonstrating something to you. I'm trying to explain my thought processes, if that makes sense. So, 
so. It does make for harder editing. It takes longer to edit when I talk so much. That is true. I'm wondering if I can do a little bit of orange on the bottom of these yellow things just for fun. Barely there. And I can do this with these squeeze bottles because it's the small tip. If this was the bigger, cheap squeeze bottles, you don't have that much control over what comes out of your bottle. So you're not going to have that kind of control with the other bottles. These thin tipped ones are fantastic. That's why I ordered eight more of them. That's pretty. I don't know if it will or not. I like it though because it's colorful and it's got brown instead of black. And um, I was kind of trying to do it to go in my sister's kitchen, which she may not. She's going to pick something out to take back home with her. And it may not be this one. But I just wanted to try to see if I could get it to kind of. She has a beautiful house, and her kitchen is a soft golden yellow, and then there's an accent wall that's like a pumpkin orange color, and she has dark brown kind of furniture and accents and a rug that she got at Target that's beautiful that is a dark brown background with yellows and golds and oranges and reds, and then her accent color is turquoise. So that's why I wanted the turquoise in this particular painting. And so you don't see any of the turquoise that I base coated the canvas with. That was just basically so you couldn't see how ugly the canvas was to begin with. But believe me, I've done, it was back in the earlier, you know, when sometimes you just don't have any luck and so I let, I let it sit for a long time, and I thought I can use it for a background, but it wasn't even usable for a background, in my opinion. I'm trying to blend these yellow-orange things in a little bit. And then I almost, I think I'll almost be done. See, hopefully all this won't sink overnight. So I drip some green down here, get that off with my finger and just put some brown back. Now I'm just going to turn the canvas around a little bit and it's on push pins so it's not touching the table. Now I wanted to see this end of the canvas which I had not seen. Make sure it looks okay from the top side. So the paint is real thin here. I was going to see. See, it's already dried enough to where I can't do anything with it. what a paintbrush would do and paint. Um, this is an experiment.
See, it's thicker here. So, I don't want to ruin it. Okay, I'm not going to add any more. I think I'm done. I'm going to leave it. Be careful when you lift because when you lift and it starts tilting, you're in trouble. Just making sure I don't have any places where my fingers were touching. Different styles and all appeal to different people. I just didn't want to use black. This time I wanted to try something in the brown family. You can swipe with any color. It doesn't have to be black and white. That's not the only two colors you can swipe with. Hands. My husband promised not to touch my camera with paint on my hands. The camera down to show you the painting. I wanted to show you this. And this is with one coat of that high gloss Liquitex varnish that I put on really thick and I kind of scrubbed it around in circles. And look at that coat. That's one coat. And that's all this painting needs is one coat. It takes, you know, people don't want to spend money on varnish that's expensive and that kind of thing. Liquitex high gloss varnish is expensive. It's uh, a cord is 30 something dollars, but you can always find coupons. You, it's, it's in the link below my video on Amazon. You can also um, order it from an art supply stores that are the really large chains where they offer it at a discounted price. So I always get it discounted one way or the other. And Minwax Polyacrylic is very similar. You can get that at any paint or hardware store. And that does pretty much the same thing. But you can put gloss on with a sponge brush and get a great finish. You just have to know how to do it, but you got to work very quickly. And like I said, I put this on kind of, I squirted it on the canvas and I scrubbed it around in a circular motion with my brush. I didn't even go straight across and look how pretty that is. I was going to do another coat of varnish for you, but I don't need to because this is a good enough coat right here. So I just wanted to show you that. And this was this dried to the touch while I've done this whole video. First time I've used this camera and hopefully it's doing its thing the, the right way. So I'm just starting at the bottom to show you some of the detail. And I didn't do perfect lines or anything like that. I do. Actually, I may add a little bit of orange. Like in the centers of these flowers, I'm going to probably add a little bit of orange and yellow dots. This is, um, this has taken me three hours almost from start to finish to do this video. But it will be edited down to probably, you know, 30 minutes to an hour for you. That's how I do my editing. But see all the colors, and I love I love the uh, the cells. I wish they were bigger in the background, but that's okay. But you see all those colorful little cells that come up, and let's see. Like this one is pretty, and that one has pretty cells in it with a hint of green. But even like this leaf over here, it's got all the different cells in it. So that's, there you are looking at the 24 by 24 inch canvas. And that is my big bouquet of flowers. Now, these light green stems feel a little punchy right now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and then I can always come back in and put a dark, darker green along the edge of these lines with the, the fine bottle writer 
and that will soften that green up a little bit. I may or may not do it just depending on how the whole thing dries. But so what I'm going to do with these these little flowers here Just add a dot or two of orange. And yellow. Give them a little centers. That's what I'm gonna do on all those. So you'll you'll see that in the final picture because because at the final end of the video, I always post the dried picture. I don't post the wet picture, I dry I post the dry picture. I want you to see what it totally looks like dried at the end. And if you click down at the bottom right beside the subscribe, if you click and you like me and you want to subscribe, that's awesome. The bell beside it, if you click on that, it'll have little parentheses around it and that means you'll get notifications when I post new videos. Also check out the link below for Raw Connect which is a show coming up in Raleigh at the Ritz on July 19th at seven, uh, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock p.m. And I will be one of the artists and it's going to have live music and fashion, all kinds of uh, artists there. I think about 60 different people. And it's going to be fun and it costs $20 for a ticket. And if you click on the link below, it'll take you to my page on Raw. And it is a nationwide event that happens in large cities around the country. And I'm super proud to be a part of it. And if you cannot attend in Raleigh, and, but you would like to just support, if you will, please click, click on that link. And you can purchase a ticket just to help support me at this event. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, Saturday, June 23rd, this coming Saturday at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, look for me and Lily's Mix live. We're do doing a collaboration together. We're going to do some pours together, and it's going to be live where people can ask questions, and there's going to be, you know, some fun. So please join us Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, please, which means you like it. And if you want to subscribe and you haven't already, please do. Thank you. Bye-bye.